Hi, uh, my name is Russell Hansen, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to gesture recognition and uh, sensors that can detect gestures. Who's used a Connect or has hacked a Connect or gotten the data first? So about three people, maybe. Who's used Ableton Live? Three or four people? Okay. okay. So, um, what's something that you'd like to do with gestures in Ableton Live? about control LFOs and uh, other synthesizers. Well, you can do that using a very simple Max patch. And it looks like this. Um, so there's a Max patch called Max Connect Event, and it takes data from this program called Synapse, which feeds um, data from the Connect um, directly to Ableton and Max. I'll, uh, I'll just show you Synapse pretty quickly. So what Synapse does is it takes, it's a, it's a native Mac and Windows app that, that takes the depth image and sends the, the skeleton uh, info to other applications, like uh, Amazon Live. So let's see if we can get Synapse code. Body dysmorphia disorder, what it does is it applies different effects to the, uh, to the image. So if you hit um, blur, it'll blur it more. If you hit capital B, it'll blur it less. And then you can change the puffiness factor. Okay. So the puffiness <laughs> factor. <laughs> Your senior year, I probably 
with the body image. Is that supposed to happen? Like if you raise your right hand, your left hand blows. Yeah, it's, it's backwards. It's yeah. Like, I've been trying to get the source code for this program for a while, and the guy will not just post the source code. So I'm not sure where. So that's what it looks like when you try to run the demo, and uh, this is what it looks like when you watch a practice session to represent it. So in open frameworks, as you can see, you can add different effects to the, the points. So you have all these points, and you can add different um, types of effects to, to change the color, to change the size of the dots, and so forth. You can also change the shading of the points. <laughs> Has anybody used open frameworks before? So this is a, a pretty nice set of things that are built into frameworks uh, that work, again, pretty much out of the box. So they're nice. So it's a lot of eye candy. He's, at, he's just adding more. So the trouble that happens when you start trying to get away from just these sort of random effects and noise with the connect is that what if you actually want to control something? Like you want to control the, the steering wheel of a car or you want to control um, something more complicated, like you want to have your right hand actuate something or you want to have your left hand actuate something. Um, what happens is you end up with this kind of tricky machine learning problem where you you have a bunch of data that's being streamed from the sensor to the computer, and you want to find these signals in a pretty noisy data stack. So what ends up happening is you, <coughs> you, you have to apply a lot of digital signal processing or machine learning methods to this data, which is very noisy data. For instance, um, 
this is the the x, y, and z coordinates of somebody's hand. So in this case, uh, red is x, uh, green is y, and blue is z. And so if you're just taking the x, y, and z coordinates from somebody and mapping them, uh, it looks kind of like this. So you have a time series data, and you want to get the, the threshold and use that threshold to actuate something. And this is a pretty basic pattern recognition problem. So you have a threshold, you want to test whether an event is true, and then when that event is true, you want to actuate something else. It gets more and more complicated as you, you add multiple events, and, and sometimes the threshold changes. So you know, if you're if you're standing here, but then you move a little bit back, maybe your, your threshold ends up changing somewhat. The Connect is not the only device that you can use to do this. Uh, you could actually do gesture recognition with uh, the accelerometer in your phone. You could do it using a Wii remote. Um, and, and a lot of the problems are very similar. So you, you want to use signal processing or machine learning to actuate something. If you're curious about getting yourself a Connect and getting set up, you need to make sure that you get the connect with this uh, extra USB power adapter if you want to plug it into a PC. The, the regular connect for the uh, Xbox doesn't usually have this uh, power adapter. If you want to set up some pattern recognition with the Wiimote, there's a really nice uh, package called EyesWeb, which has a bunch of, uh, it's, a, it's a graphical programming environment that allows you to basically stream the data straight from your Wiimote. And if you want to use this uh, Synapse program that I mentioned, uh, you can download it for Mac and uh, Windows at synapseconnect.tumblr.com. As I said, it, it's super easy to get it going on the uh, on the Mac, but. Um, On the PC, it has a lot more involved installation. It thinks your main laptop screen to main display. So I turned mirroring on. Oh, <laughs> weird. As I was saying, if you, if you want to install it on Windows, and, and I'm sure some of you will, um, essentially what you have to do is you have to install the OpenNI um, binary, you have to install the PrimeSense middleware, uh, you have to install the Sensor Connect driver, restart your computer, um, plug, the, plug the Connect into your USB port, um, and then hopefully, <laughs> You, everything is set up so that, for instance, Synapse or some of these other systems will get the data and connect. So, returning to pattern recognition for this, the uh, as you start getting more into using this data, the uh, machine learning is basically the, the way to go. So, in machine learning, you oftentimes want to discriminate between two data sets. So, you want to tell the green balls from the red balls. Uh, using a binary classifier or a cluster. There are essentially three phases of machine learning. There is a data collection phase, learning phase, and a prediction phase. 
So for instance, using the gesture recognition toolkit to um, <clears throat> the way it's set up to do the, the training phase is you hit the you record data, you, you hit the record button, you step back, you do your motion, but you have five seconds from when you hit uh, record to when it starts taking data. You record data for about five seconds, and then that records uh, adds the data to the machine learning environment. So that's a, a pretty powerful way to, to do machine learning from connecting. So you, you say record data, you record some data, um, and then you, you label that data. So you can do continuous things like you could have your arms pointing to the left to uh, like fly to the left on an airplane, or you could have your arms to the right to fly to the right on an airplane. And you can interpolate continuously between these two um, external The, the two tasks that, that are implemented in the gesture recognition toolkit are basically classification and regression. So regression might be interpolating between the furthest left you can go um, with a, a steering wheel and right, furthest to the right, or if you're flying a, an airplane, say, furthest to the left or furthest to the right. And classification would be you know, raising your hand to, to signal something. There's a discrete output. The two types of machine learning are basically a supervised learning uh, session where the, the person comes in and, class, and labels everything as class A or class B. And in unsupervised learning, you don't have labels and you rely on machine learning algorithms to discriminate between the two classes. Or, So this is basically the, the system that works in the gesture recognition toolkit. So the way you program this in C++ is you initialize a, a gesture recognition pipeline, which is your pipeline. You add a, a preprocessing module, which is often something like a digital signal processor, so you can add a moving average filter. And then you add, for instance, a fast Fourier transform as the feature extraction module. So you add um, the feature extraction model to the pipeline. And then you add a classifier um, to the pipeline. So this is the value based classifier. Uh, you can add a class label um, timeout filter to the end of the pipeline. So in this case, there's a timeout filter. And um, create a, uh, an object for the training data and test data. So label classification data is the training here and label classification test data test data. And one of the really nice things about the test recognition toolkit is you can save data to a file and then load it back. So you don't have to retrain your model every time you want to do it. And um, once you've trained the data, then you basically just do prediction. So let me show you what happens when you don't use a sophisticated machine learning method to, to do uh, your, your task. We are not entering the demo.
So what this uh, demo is, we'll illustrate shortly once it's, it's working properly, is how to, how to use a gesture to, to zoom in or zoom out of a screen. And so basically what this one does is if you go like this, it zooms out, and if you go like this, it zooms in. So it draws this three-dimensional thing, it recognizes my skeleton, and then I zoom it in, or I zoom it out. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, <laughs> it's, so this is in processing, and it's um, processing is actually really convenient to do stuff with the, the Connect. Um, you can actually get up to I've had I think five five skeletons recognized simultaneously with processing, and it's uh, and that, that's a lot for Connect. It's only it's only supposed to do two. So I'm, I'm going to show you quickly how what it looks like to program uh, the coordinates in processing, just because it's right here in front of us. So, um, so processing is if you're not if you haven't used it before, it basically looks like Java. It's sort of a restricted subset of Java. So um, you get a, a user list from doing context.get users. You loop over all the users, so you can have multiple users in one scene. You initialize a, a left hand, a left elbow, a right hand, a right elbow. And then all you need to do to get the, um, the coordinates is say, uh, get joint position skeleton of the user that you're currently on, simple open an, an eye uh, skeleton left hand, and so forth for the, uh, the, the right hand, the left hand. And then in order to, to use that, all you do is left hand dot x, left elbow dot x, and you've got the, uh, the x, y, and z coordinates of all of the joints. Indeed, very easy to, to write the next step in a few lines in class. I'm coming up on the end of my allotted time, so um, there are really quite a lot of ways to use uh, connect data and depth image data to, to do lots of different things from controlling music to controlling actuators to zooming scenes in and out. I recommend checking out this uh, gesture recognition toolkit, um, Synapse, and the, uh, the connect data to patches are also a very convenient way to control music using the connect and, and the Synapse. And there are lots of uh, connect hacks you can find around on the web. And and oftentimes you just plug in your uh, connect and you can start acting. Thank you very much. That's it.